If you're using context within your React application, you've probably already run into this issue at some point of time, maybe without you even noticing it. So where's the issue? Imagine I have three children wrapped by a parent, and whenever I update the value for my parent, for some reason, children also get re-rendered. As you can see, children have this render ID number and they are generated on the fly. I just put them for testing purposes. And whenever I press the button, the session ID updates for the parent and children get re-rendered unnecessarily because as you can see, the user ID is static, child is static. So nothing, we have no props to the children, but they still get re-rendered. Why? Because we're using the context in the wrong way. Let me also prove you that they are re-rendering by simply opening the React DevTools like this, going to components and open the view settings. And here we need to make sure that highlight updates when components re-render is ticked on like this. And whenever I press this update session button, we're going to see that our child components are highlighted with a marker. And now you can see that every component is being re-rendered. This is bad. Now, you're probably not going to notice any difference in a, such a small application that I have. But if you have a large application, which has a big component tree, you're definitely going to notice the difference and your application is probably going to become sluggish. So in order to avoid this, we need to make sure that our React context is optimized. So let's go back to our code and let's take a look at our children. As I told you, we don't really have any props except for the children to just render the child number. And we're doing it by passing it in the root component to, so the root component has a parent and three children. And we're also passing the session ID just to make sure that the parent updates whenever the prop changes. And we're changing the props on by this, by clicking on this button. So session ID from the use state is being passed down and the parent ID looks interesting. So we have a state here as well and it holds the current user ID. So we also can set the current user ID and we also have a login method which logs the user in and does something, but it's being triggered from the child, all right? And how does our context look like? If I open this, you can see that it's pretty much empty and it has a null as value. So it doesn't even make sense to look at this auth context. So the interesting here thing here is that we are wrapping our child. So as you can see, children, which are coming from the root, which is a child component, we're wrapping it inside the auth context dot provider and providing this current user ID and login method as context values. And inside the children, which is this component, we want to render the user ID. So we simply grab the user ID from the context here, which is being passed here like this. And we also, as I told you in the very beginning of the video, I simply render a random number just to show that this re-rendering happens, all right? So why do children re-render when I simply update a value for my parent, right? They shouldn't be re-rendered. The problem is here. When we are passing the value to our context to be able to grab this value in our child component, we are passing them in the wrong way. First of all, every time this parent JS updates, the state reinstantiates. It means that this value is going to be new every time the parent.js re-renders. And it's the same thing with a login. So it's a function, which means functions in the background of JavaScript are still objects, right? And when the parent.js re-renders this, um, the child, even though the child uses memo to make sure that it memorizes the props that are coming into it, it's still going to reference to the completely new function. I explained all of that in one of my previous videos where I was explaining how you can optimize your props that you're giving to your children with the help of the use callback and use memo. But this is pretty much the same issue, although this is in the context of the context. All right. So how can we alleviate is this issue and make sure that children don't get updated when I update the parent. So this is how we're going to do it. First of all, we're going to make sure that our login is not just a method, but it's also uh, using use callback. So we're going to do it like this use callback and it automatically got imported. So let's use it the right way. And we also need to provide provide an array of dependencies. But in our case, we want to we want it to be instantiated only once. So the array of dependencies is empty. And to, to, to just make our life easier, and we also know that we would like to wrap this current user ID in a memo as well, we will create a new variable, let's say context values, and it's going to be something like this. 
we're gonna use use memo like this and it accepts an anonymous function like this and an anonymous function is gonna return an object which consists first of all of the current user ID so we're gonna put it here and the second is gonna be the login so I'm gonna using of course the modern JavaScript so otherwise you would have have to done it like this login so that you're passing the same variables but since I'm cool and I'm using the ES6 features, I'm simply gonna remove them. And I'm gonna use context values instead of the object that I'm passing here. And that's it, that should work. And of course, let's make sure that we also pass an array of dependencies for the use memo. And here is the where the trick lies. So we want to make sure that we only update our children when the user ID updates, right? Otherwise, we have no reason to update our children. So we're gonna say update the children only when the user ID updates. And that's pretty much it. And of course, our ESLint is gonna complain because usually you want to use all the de dependencies that you're referencing inside. So let's also pass the login function. Oops, not like this, but like this. And now no ESLint complaints and we're good to go. Let's go to our child or our application. Take a look at our, our child render IDs and I press the button and the session ID updates, but our children are static and they don't get triggered. So this is how you would optimize your context. Here's one interesting thing though. And it's a pretty cool thought that I've already seen many people discussing. So whenever you find yourself providing too many properties here inside your context and you need to make sure that not none of them are being updated. So let me do something like this. Imagine we are passing like a lot of uh, properties. This could be a sign that you probably need to split your context. So you have one context, maybe create another context for a different domain. For example, one context can be responsible for authentication. Another context can, context can be responsible for the visual part of the authentication. So make sure that you don't put everything into one context. Otherwise, it can be cumbersome to manage it. All right. If you liked the video and if you yeah learned something new today, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Mm -hmm. Press like because it's going to help the channel a lot and going to show it to affiliate developers. And I'm going to see you in the next video. Goodbye.